Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to talk about how you can actually use the main Dart, uh, the main Dart file and Dart in Fellowflow. So uh, this is actually very important if you want to have some, if you want to use some package or if you want to use some code that has to be put inside the main, uh, in the main Dart file. Uh, and you already know, you probably already know that if you go to custom code and on the bottom after custom functions, custom widgets and custom actions, you already have this custom files and you have main.dart. And unfortunately, you can't, I cannot actually write here or whatever. I cannot change this file. It says cannot edit and read only editor. Uh, but we can actually include actions. So we can actually uh, have a custom action which should not include arguments. And it's written over here with the yellow uh, text. It says, note only actions with no arguments, including build context, can be added. So only actions without any uh, arguments. So, and you can add them over here. If I click here and those are my actions without arguments, and I can, you can actually see them over here. Uh, but you probably already know about that. And today we are not going to talk about this particular way of adding files. We're going to uh, talk about some other way because Today, we are going to look at Sentry. Sentry, I was using Sentry uh, a lot. Uh, I really like this platform. It's about uh, catching uh, bugs in your code. Uh, and they have a Flutter uh, package. And if you want to use their Flutter package, uh, you have to actually, so this is how you can use it because in usage, this is how you use it. And you actually see this future void main, and then I, I think, async. Uh, and this main is actually your main file. So if we go back uh, to Flutterflow, you can actually see your main uh, async file. Uh, and they want us to actually change the way this works. Uh, but unfortunately, as I told you already, you cannot do that right now. It's not possible using this way. So I'm going to show you actually an approach that you can use uh, to still access uh, this uh, main.dart file and actually uh, make it work, make it to work. Uh, and um, and yeah, so let's actually jump into uh, the demo. And this is actually my demo. Uh, there is not a lot into it, to be honest, uh, but I have one uh, button, which is only the only thing of the button that it's using is when I press it, it will actually return an error. Uh, and if I go to uh, Sentry, uh, you can actually see uh, that previously I did that. I sent an error uh, uh, to Sentry. And you can actually, if you haven't used Sentry, it's Sentry.io. Uh, and you can set up a new project and then uh, you can see the code. But I will guide you into that. But uh, when you're done, when you set up your project, this is, if you have an error, this is what you're going to see. So you're going to see like, where is this error coming from? Uh, here it's a little bit gibberish because it's uh, uh, like everything it's, uh, because it's a web version, it's it's hard to debug because everything gets uh, converted into JavaScript. So that's why you see this main.file.js. For the best uh, performance out there, uh, I will actually advise you to use uh, a mobile app for that so you can actually see the actual code and where is this actually coming from 
Uh, and you actually see that uh, it is the, what is this error? It says provider minified not found for minified IO, which doesn't make uh, doesn't say much, uh, but uh, it still uh, tell you what is this error. Uh, and then it says if it's a new error. So if it says new issue, that means that this error is the first time that you see this error in uh, Sentry. And if I mark it as resolved, if I click on it and mark it as resolved, when it appears again, the same issue, it will no longer have this new issue. So it's not a new issue, it's just a reappearing issue. And then you have your project name, which in my case, it's FF demo. And this is the number of errors that you have. I have currently, I have this sixth error, uh, six different types of error. Uh, it's very important to know this is the type, the different types of error. Those are the different types of errors, not the number of the total error. Uh, and this is like the last time it, the error was seen. And this is the first time the error was seen. And because this is once this, this uh, error was only once, that's why th those are the same. Uh, and we have a graph how often this error uh, you see and you have how often, uh, what number, how many times that this error appeared. In my case, it's one. And you have the user, how many users this error impact. And then you can assign this error to someone. Uh, and if I go to my old error, uh, for example, let me go to, or maybe I can go to my resolved errors. So if we go to resolve errors, you can actually see, uh, for example, this error, uh, exception testing center integration. Uh, I have it uh, three times, for example, and then this one I have it two times, and this one I have it from two different users, for example. So yeah, you probably get the idea uh, how this works. And this is actually coming, I think this is coming from a web version, but this is actually coming from mobile, from the mobile version. So that's why you can actually see it, it's a little bit different. And then you can actually see that also the name of the file, it's dot dart. It's not that the JS. And if we go over here, uh, you can again see that it's that dart. Uh, but if we go over here, it's that JS. That means that this this is a web version. So, like I said, there's not a much uh, into uh, the demo how it works. But I can actually show you that uh, I wanted to show you that it actually did it did actually work. Uh, so let me show you how I build it. So, like I showed you at the beginning, uh, you can, in order to somehow change or use the main.dart file, uh, you have to include action. And that's fine, that's okay. But in our case particularly, we want to actually uh, modify the main.dart uh, itself. I don't want to actually put an action into it, I want to modify the main.dart file. And in our case, like I said, in our case, we can actually switch to Flutterflow. And then what I did, what I tried to, to do, and I, as I showed you, it worked actually is I created a new custom action. And inside this custom action, I actually imported the main.dart file. Uh, and I imported, I imported main.dart file as main. And then I actually, what I did is I simply copy and paste the code from Sentry, which is importing the package, putting the package over here, importing it on the right side, I imported Sentry Flutter and also Sentry as well. Um, and then uh, I have my custom action, which is set up Sentry, uh, and then this is important. This is the most important part, probably. It's a Sentry Flutter that initiates initiate. Uh, and when you run this Sentry Flutter that initiate, it is actually initiating the Sentry uh, service, and then it's running on your whole app. So that's why you have this app runner, and then you have uh, run app, and then to run the app. And to use this app or to use our app, uh, I did it with main dot and then my app. 
So this is how I use it. This is how I get, I got access to my main Dart file. Uh, and if you want to do that, uh, or if you need to actually have access to your main Dart file, this is actually how you can do it. And this is how I did it. So if I switch back to my main Dart file, you can actually see it over here. It says run app. Uh, and this is again run app. There could be conflicts actually about that. Um, they could be like because you're running like two instances of run app. One is from over here, and another is from the main that Dart file. There could be some conflicts. But what I tried and what I did is that I make sure that I made sure that this action is only run once uh, and it's not running twice so what i did actually if i switch to my page i hope i have only one page if i go here uh, i created a page state which says sentry setup and by default it's false and this is a boolean and by default it's false and if i go to my uh, scaffold widget uh, and those are my own page load and I have sentry setup is set. So if it is set, uh, then it will not do anything. But if it's not set, uh, then it will actually uh, then it will actually uh, set up set it up. So I'm not actually sure. I think that this uh, will probably this will probably it's better if you're using a boolean. It's better uh, to be like that. So uh center setup it's if it's false uh so sorry if it's true actually because if it's true and this is true it will go over here but if it's false it will go over here uh and it will run the same action that i just showed you that is going to have access to the main file and then it's going to change the set state to true and that's that's about it. That's what I did. Uh, and then I have a simple, I created a simple error, uh, which is if I go to error uh, action, uh, you can actually see the error that I have. Uh, and the error that I have, uh, currently you need to run it uh, inside a try block, uh, and then you have to catch the error. Uh, you have to catch the error uh, and just have it, put it inside the stack trace. Uh, and then this will actually send it to Sentry. Uh, and you, you will be able to see your, uh, your errors there. Uh, so I think that's about it. Uh, it was a short video, but I wanted to explain you because I never used that technique before. Uh, and I was uh, try to uh, deal with it and work with it. And finally, as I showed you, it worked. So if you ever need to use main.dart file or my app inside your custom code, uh, this is probably one of the way. Maybe there are uh, other ways, but this is one of the way that I tested and it worked for me. And uh, I forgot to say to you that uh, please uh, ensure that you have click it on exclude from compilation. Like I always say, if I have if you have dots inside uh, in the imports, uh, then this file is coming from Flutterflow. Then you have to exclude from compilation, or else it will not work. And before you go, I just want to let you know that I set up a Discord channel, which will be for my three thousand subscribers. Uh, so thank you very much for everyone who subscribed to the channel. The Discord channel will be officially announced when I reach the 3,000 subscribers. Uh, it is uh, well structured. It will be well structured uh, with the uh, general tab, uh, which you can see the info, the news. And we will have also click to talk, so you can actually talk to other members of the channel and we have the youtube videos as well where you can see all the youtube videos you can also have if you want to uh uh if, if you want to request a video you can go to uh video requests and then we have the paid members from youtube uh which they have a separate channel where they can talk uh 
Uh, I also have from the mentoring sessions, we have the paid uh, members. And then it's structured by backend, Fluverflow, API calls, Superbase, uh, SQLite. And then you have the design where you can ask design questions. We have the custom code, uh, which is uh, uh, code expressions, uh, custom functions, uh, custom widgets, custom actions, and Fluverflow source code. We can uh, talk about the Fluverflow source code as well. And we have integrations as well, uh, pub, dev, uh, packages, platforms, if you want to integrate different platforms. We have the general integrations. And then we have, you don't see it from my face, but we have also the settings. We have the dynamic links, we have the push notifications, we have the app settings, we have the Android deployment, we have the iOS deployment, and we have the web deployment. And the last thing that we have is actually we have the languages and we have uh, other languages. So we have like uh, Swedish, for example, Spanish, Portuguese, you know, other languages that, that people from those countries or those languages can talk uh, in their own language. Uh, so yeah, like I said, thank you very much for all the subscribers. Uh, and uh, before you go, I just want to say that the paid membership for YouTube is now open. So you can be a paid member to my YouTube channel, which means a lot. And thank you very much for all the people who are right now paid members to the channel.